Section 5.3 is exponential functions. If you need a review of exponential rules and laws of exponents, I suggest watching the 8.1 review video starting about 8 minutes into the video. So here's just a brief review of some exponential laws. One thing to notice is all of these only hold true if they're the same base. So for instance, this first one, you have a base 9 and a base 3. So we need to rewrite this base 9 so that it has the same base as this base 3. So 9 is the same thing as 3 squared, so we can write this as 3 squared to the 2 plus root 7, and then apply this rule. So we have 3 to the 4 plus 2 root 7. Make sure you distribute that 2 to both the 2 and the root 7. So you have 3 to a power divided by 3 to a power, so now you can apply this rule. So go ahead and pause the video and simplify this. So if you subtract the exponents, make sure you distribute that negative inside, so you end up with 3 to the 2 plus 3 root 7. And just leave it that way, there's nothing else to really do. So go ahead and pause the video and try these next two. These already have the same base and you're multiplying them together so you can add the exponents. 4 plus 2 is 5, negative root 5 plus positive root 5 goes away, so you end up with 2 to the 5th which is 32. So you haven't already done so, go ahead and pause the video and try this last one. Last one, you have a power raised to a power, so you can multiply them. Root 3 times root 3 is just 3, so you end up with 5 to the 6th, or 15,625. Exponential function is a function of the form y equals b to the x, where your base b is positive but not equal to 1, and you can apply all the same transformations that we've been talking about throughout the year to these exponential functions. Let's try one. We have f of x is equal to 2 to the x. When you're doing exponential functions, each base is kind of its own parent function, but they follow the same rules. So I've created a table right here of values. Go ahead and pause the video and find these y-coordinates. So remember, anything to a negative power flips it over, so you end up with 1 half. Anything to the 0 power is 1, and then 1, 2, and 2, 4. So you end up with this type of look. One thing to think about with exponentials, is there anything you can plug in for x, anything you can raise a positive number to, to get a negative number or zero. So remember, exponential just means repeated multiplication. So I can't multiply two by itself any number of times and ever get a negative number or ever get zero. So what that means is the parent function of every exponential has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. If there's transformations, this might change, but this is always the starting spot of your horizontal asymptote. So if you take your plotted points and your horizontal asymptote, this is what your exponential looks like for this one. So now what I want you to do is pause the video and answer these next couple questions. So domain you can plug anything into an exponential. You can plug in positive, negative, zero, fractions. So your domain is all real numbers. For your range, we have this horizontal asymptote here. So our range is y is greater than zero. You can't get zero or a negative. It's a function because every x only has one y. Two squared will always be four. You can't plug in two and get a different number. And it is, in fact, one to one. There's no repeated y coordinates. So if it is one-to-one, -one, what does that mean about its inverse? That's something to think about. So now we want to look at f of x is equal to one-half to the x. There's two ways you could graph this. You could go through all the same steps we did right here, or you could think about the relationship between two to the x and one-half to the x. So if you remember from right here, two to a negative one power is one-half, so we could rewrite one-half as two to the negative one, which makes this 2 to the negative x. So we could actually just do a transformation on 2 to the x to graph 1 half to the x. So go ahead and pause the video and graph 2 to the negative x. What would that mean? So if we apply our transformation, remember a negative x reflects you across the y-axis, so all these points are just reflected across. The negative 1 becomes a positive 1, 0 stays the same, 1 becomes negative 1, 2 becomes negative 2. So you end up with this graph right here as y is equal to 1 half to the x or 2 to the negative x. Here's how we solve exponential equations. I would pause the video and write down these notes before we get started on the first example. So just like on the previous ones where we were simplifying, we always want to get the same base. So for this first one, we have a 4 to the 2x is equal to 64. Well, we want to be able to write 64 as a base 4. 
64 is the same thing as 4 cubed, so now I have the same base. If you have the same base raised to an exponent and they're equal to each other, that means that the exponents have to be equal. You know these numbers are equal, the bases are already equal, so the only thing left is that the exponents have to be equal. So 2x has to equal 3, so if you divide both sides by 2, we know that x is equal to 3 halves. So when you're solving exponential equations, you always want to try and get the bases to be the same on everything. So now what I want you to do is looking at this second example, I want you to write all three of these parts with the same base. So the smallest base is base 3, so I'm going to write everything as a base 3. 1 ninth is the same thing as 3 to the negative 2, and 27 is the same thing as 3 cubed. So now what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and simplify this left side using your exponential rules. So we have a power raised to a power, so I simplified that into negative 2x plus 6. You just multiply them, make sure you distribute. And then we have two things multiplied together with the same base, so add their exponents, you get 3 to the 3x plus 4. So now that you're here, you have the same base on both sides. Go ahead and pause the video and solve for x. So you have 3 on both sides raised to an exponent, which means you can set the exponents equal to each other, and you get x to the negative one-third. So always make sure you get them in terms of the same base. Once they're in the same base, you can just set the exponents equal to each other. Last thing to note is the natural exponent e, so f of x equals e to the x. e is a never-ending irrational constant just like pi. We usually just think of it as 2.7, but from now on whenever you see e, it's the exponential constant 2.7. This will show up a lot in the next couple sections when we get to modeling with exponentials.